Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Protein synthesis, more commonly called translation, is an important biological process where ribosomes utilize mRNA to make proteins. In this sketch, we'll specifically be covering eukaryotic translation. But first, you're probably hungry from all this talk about proteins. So let's grab lunch at Epnot's International Food Court. Ah, the International Food Court. A diverse collection of mouth-watering foods that would make anyone's tongue go cuckoo-cachoo. Today's special is dim sum. Anyways, so what do you need to know about translation? We'll begin by drawing this cytosol billboard to remind you that intracellular proteins are made in free-floating ribosomes found in the cytosol. On the contrary, proteins that will eventually be secreted are made in the rough ER. Besides ribosomes, you'll need a few other key components to make proteins. You gotta have some mRNA to serve as the template, transfer, or tRNA to add amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain, and a fabulous blend of rice vinegar and soy sauce. Uh, no way, I'm just hungry. A quick blurb about tRNAs. They link the mRNA codon with the corresponding amino acid that it codes for. There are many different tRNAs, each containing a unique anticodon triplet sequence and respective amino acid. Now, before we can actually start making proteins, we'll first need to charge the tRNA molecule. Aminoacyl tRNA synthetase uses ATP to attach an amino acid to the three prime end of the tRNA acceptor stem, creating a fully charged aminoacyl tRNA. This enzyme is symbolized by the robot adding dim sum to a tea steamer basket. Note the three yellow P batteries because we need ATP to charge the tRNA molecule. And just a heads up, our bodies have 20 different versions of this enzyme, one for each amino acid. <laughs> Imagine the possibilities. Anyway, very rarely, this enzyme adds the wrong amino acid to the tRNA. Yeah, robots make mistakes too. Fortunately, under most circumstances, they can identify the error and switch out the wrong amino acid for the correct one. Okay, let's look at these labels on the cart. They represent the tRNA binding sites on the ribosome. The incoming charged tRNA enters the A site, the P site holds the growing polypeptide, and the empty tRNA leaves the E site. With that basic info out of the way, let's start translating. There are three stages of translation, initiation, elongation, and termination. And for once, each of those is exactly what it sounds like. We'll keep bringing these up as we go through the steps. First, initiation. Eukaryotic initiation factors help attach the small ribosomal subunit to the initiator tRNA carrying methionine before bringing the complex to the 5' prime cap of mRNA. To simplify things, we'll have this worker represent all the initiation factors. Her job is to bring the pieces together, the order slip, dim sum cart, and of course, a tea steamer basket with the cutest mountain lion dumpling ever. Aww. See how that dim sum cart is missing its domed lid? That's because it's just the small subunit. We don't have a full ribosome yet. Next, the complex scans the mRNA from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction until the start codon, AUG, base pairs with the initiator tRNA anticodon and subsequently recruits the large ribosomal subunit. Here at Sketchy, we'll be using this transparent dome to symbolize the large ribosomal subunit, which also happens to function as a snazzy sneeze guard, something that test question writers won't tell you. So now that everything is ready to go, we don't need the initiation factors anymore. So we'll use GTP to make them go away. So long, pal. Now that we've gotten set up, initiation is done. Next up is elongation. With the initiator tRNA positioned in the P site, another incoming tRNA carrying a new amino acid enters the A site with help from GTP. The tRNA anticodon base pairs with the mRNA codon from the 5' prime end. After the first two positions are paired, the exact base pairing of the third position is less important, allowing for nonspecific binding of base pairs. This phenomenon is known as wobble. The wobble effect explains why there's redundancy found in the genetic code. Basically, multiple mRNA codons can code for the same amino acid. Watch our RNA structure and function sketch to learn more. All right, enough of that. Let's start stacking dumplings. I mean, amino acids. Our RNA, also called ribozyme, joins the amino acids by creating a peptide bond. 
This results in the growing polypeptide being transferred to the tRNA positioned in the A site. Let's hope our pal riboslime washed his hands. Or you might be getting some E. coli, free of charge. We'll also need elongation factors to facilitate elongation, but beyond the simple fact that they exist, they aren't super important to know for exams. So we won't go too deep on elongation factors or symbolize them, and we'll move on. Okay, the next step is translocation, where the ribosome moves three bases in the three prime direction so there's a fresh new codon available in the A site. This step requires GTP, and I can imagine pulling these dim sum carts probably require some energy too. So now that the ribosome has moved over, the empty tRNA can leave from the E site and the tRNA carrying the polypeptides moves from A to P. This frees up the A site to accept another charged tRNA, at which point all of these steps will repeat. And they'll continue to repeat and repeat and repeat, elongating the polypeptide, until we reach the final stage of translation, termination. Eukaryotic release factors recognize a stop codon, of which there are three options. UGA, UAG, or UAA. This, uh, stops translation, and the polypeptide is released from the ribosome. That's a big stack of dumplings. Looks like our customers had enough. Note that GTP is also required for this final step. Ooh, man, I love dim sum, but even I can only eat so much. I'm gonna have to lie down for a sec, so let's go over these key points real quick. Translation is the biological process where ribosomes use mRNA and tRNA to make proteins. It takes place in the cytosol or rough ER depending on what kind of proteins are being made. Before we can actually start making proteins, amino acyl tRNA synthetase uses ATP to charge the tRNA molecule. Translation is divided into three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. First, initiation factors help bring the small ribosomal subunit, initiator tRNA, and mRNA together, forming the initiation complex. Next, the ribosome scans the mRNA until the start codon, AUG, which codes for methionine, appears. The large ribosomal subunit joins, while the initiation factors dissociate from the complex. With the initiator tRNA in the P site, a new amino acyl tRNA enters the A site. Then, ribozyme creates a peptide bond to join the amino acids. Afterward, the ribosome moves one codon over, moving all the tRNAs, so another new amino acyl tRNA can come in. Elongation continues until release factors recognize the stop codon to stop translation, and the polypeptide is released.